Hey guys, welcome to Raw Customs. I'm your host, Patrick Rapolo, and on this episode, we're going to be making a Wolverine helmet. Now, when I was designing this helmet, I was actually going for a more aggressive, leaning towards a tactical style helmet. Uh, also put quite a few detail lines in here, and other than just making it look cool, it actually works as a function of being able to use the actual lines where you glue the piece together. That way you don't have to come in and actually spend time filling and trying to make those seams disappear. Instead of trying to make them disappear, I was trying to actually work with them to actually give it a better look and cut down on some of the work. Also guys, on a helmet like this, you actually want it to actually pull tight to your face so it actually fits better, at least on the facial area. I tend to size these up uh, just a little bit so they fit, so they're able to fit more people. It's actually a little bit larger than I actually need for my head. But since I'm building a kit and trying to get to fit the most amount of people possible, I actually size them up uh, just a little bit. This is sized, you know, where it fits somebody with a, a 23 to 23 inch and a half head uh, much better. So if your head's smaller than that, you might need to actually put some foam in there. This is just a uh, poly foam. Uh, this is actually one inch sheets. There's like four panels in here. I picked it up at Walmart for right around $10. And what I've done for me is I just cut a piece out. And what I'm going to do is take a hot glue gun and glue it in the back once I get it uh, where I want it. And when I stick it on, it's going to pull the helmet back. So it pulls it tight to my face and it's going to give it a much better look. So, of course, guys, I do have some templates available as well as a kit. If you're interested in either one of those, just head down to the description area below and you'll find the links there. Also guys, uh, if you want to keep up with uh, what I'm working on, uh, I have an Instagram as well as a Facebook page. Uh, go ahead and follow me on there. I'm always got little projects going and I tend to post when I'm working on something. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe. For now, let's get to the build. For this build, you're gonna need the kit or the template. If you go with the template, you're going to need three sheets of five millimeter foam and one sheet of three millimeter foam some contact cement, plasti dip, spray paint, a heat gun, a rodeo tool, and a razor knife. In the kit you'll find a forehead piece, top, top center, and a back piece, a top side piece for each side, then you'll have two pieces for the ear section, an outside and an inside piece. You also have overlay pieces that go on to the ear section. You also have the option of flipping the ear over and using the smooth side out. You also have a chin strap with two overlay pieces for the ends and a piece for the bridge of the nose. Start your build with the forehead section. Use a heat gun to heat the piece top and bottom. Then mold the piece over something round. Press it down over something round and hold it until the foam cools and then it will hold its shape. You'll want to repeat this process for the top, top center and back piece. Next, take your top side pieces and heat them with your heat gun. You'll want to mold these over something round as well. On this piece, you're going to more or less wrap it around something round. Now it's time to start gluing your pieces together. I recommend using contact cement. Start with the forehead piece and apply glue to the two edges at the back. On the top piece, apply glue to the front V section, the back V section, and the back edges. On the top center piece, apply glue to the front and back edges. On the back piece, you'll want to apply glue to the front edges. Once your glue set, you can start pressing your pieces together. Start with the forehead and top section. Start by lining up the points in the center. And work your way from the center to the outside edge. And make sure to keep your top surface edges flush.
Next, take your top center piece and glue it in place with the long point facing the top piece. Again, start in the center and work your way out to the sides. Now, glue the back piece in place to complete the top section. With the center section complete, apply glue to the edges on both sides. Next, take your top side pieces. Apply glue to the front edge and the inside edge from the front to the back. Glue the side piece in place starting at the point on the forehead. Line up the front edge with the point on the forehead and work your way to the back keeping your top edges flush. Once you get to the back section, at the bottom you'll need to slightly bow the piece in as you glue your pieces together to the bottom edge. On your second side piece, start by lining up the front edges of the side piece and then working your way to the back. Now grab the pieces to make the ear sections. On your overlay pieces, I recommend using a rotary tool with a grinding stone to round over the top edges all the way around. On the outside ear piece, I recommend making a bevel on the bottom, back, and top edge. On the short edge at the front, you'll want to make a rising bevel from the nose to the top edge. Next, apply glue to the top surface area inside your reference lines and to the bottom surface area of your overlays. Once your glue is set, you can line up your pieces and press them in place. With your pieces glued together, you can use a heat gun to heat this section on both sides. At the front, at the back of the eye, you'll want to bow the section down. And at the back of the nose, slightly bow this area up. Then slightly round down the side of the nose. Next, take the inside piece for the ear. There's a reference mark at the inside bottom edge. You'll want to bevel this edge from the back point to your reference mark. Fade your bevel out starting around an inch away from your reference mark. 
You'll need to bevel the back edge of this piece as well. You can use a second piece of foam against the back edge to help support this area as you make your bevel. Next, you can line up the top edges of your pieces and make a reference mark at the front of your inside side piece. Now apply glue to the beveled edge on the back and top and to the flat bottom edge. On the outside earpiece, apply glue to the inside surface area along the bottom, back, and top edge. You can stop at your reference mark. Glue your top edges together starting at the back point and working your way to the front. To glue the back edges together, you're going to bow the inside section out as you work your way around from the top point to the bottom edge. Once you start to get close to your reference mark, the bottom edge should be transitioning from the beveled edge to the flat edge. At this point, it's a good time to use a rotary tool to clean up and even out the outside edges. One option to hide the seam on the edge is to use gel super glue. You can apply a little along the edge and then use a razor to smooth it out. Once the glue is 100% dry, you can use sandpaper to sand it down and smooth everything out. Next, take the piece for the center of the nose and heat it up. Round it over along its length over something round like a marker. You'll want to round over the nose area on the ear section as well. Next, apply glue to the top and side edges of the center nose piece. Apply glue to the front edges of the top section, to the top surface area along the reference lines. On the ear sections, apply glue to the front edge along the nose, to the inside surface area above the eye, to the edge of the inside piece, and the bottom surface area. Glue the center nose piece to the top of the helmet. Glue the ear section in place starting at the bottom edge of the nose. Glue the edges together keeping the top side flush till you get to the top of the nose. At the very top you will overlap it on top of the helmet. Line the top edge up with the reference line at the top of the helmet and press your pieces together as you work your way from the front to the back. With the first ear section in place, you can repeat the same process for the other side.
At this point it may be a good idea to go ahead and reheat the front area and take some time to form it and get it to fit your face just right. Just be careful and watch your seams. You can reactivate the glue and your seams can separate. For the chin strap, I actually use magnets to hold one side together. This part isn't necessary, it's just something I've been playing with. So I lined up the chin strap on one side and poked holes through where I want to put the magnets so they would line up on each piece. Then took a Dremel bit, roughly the size of the magnet. Then used it to recess an area in the foam for the magnet to set. Then super glue was used to hold the magnets in place. There are two overlay pieces for the edges of the chin strap. I do recommend using a rotary tool to round over the edges. Apply glue to the back side of your overlays and to the marked area on the chin strap. On my chin strap, this allowed me to cover up the magnets. Once everything's glued together, you can use a heat gun to heat your piece and slightly bow it. Next, line your chin strap up in place and mark the side that needs to be permanently glued in. Apply your glue and then press your side in place. To seal the foam, I recommend using plastic dip. I like to use two light coats followed by two heavy coats. Once the plastic dip's dry, you can apply your paint. In this case, I painted the center area yellow. I used two light coats followed by one heavy coat. The area was taped off and then blue painted on the ear sections. Then an airbrush was used to paint in the details and darken down some areas. And to finish everything up, I gave it two coats of clear. All right guys, there it goes, the Wolverine helmet. Give you a better look and see how it looks actually on. Like I said, this is sized up a little bit and with the magnets clasp, it's easy to pull loose and pull off. One thing about the, uh, the foam helmets is they get hot very quickly. And luckily right now, it's actually not that hot out here, but we've uh, actually been out in the sun wearing stuff like this and uh, it's Believe me, it's real important to be able to get the, at least the helmet off very quickly so you don't get overheated and you can cool off. Now, as far as this helmet goes, the hardest thing about making it, I believe, is just beveling your edge, especially on the inside earpiece here. You really need to put that uh, little bevel in there. That's going to get the fit nice and tight and get this really good curve in the back that's going to get it to look good for you. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll know... You've probably seen the Taskmaster helmet that I was work I've was i been working on. Uh, so this will end up being a kit. I went ahead and put some lights in here just to make it look cool. Uh, but this will be a kit coming down the road. And another one I'm working on that I really like here is the Deathstroke helmet. Uh, this is one still working out the kinks, but I went ahead and painted one up and really happy with the way this looks. Uh, this is one of those ones that fits me perfect, but I need to size it up. Uh, to be able to put it out for a kit for you guys but there's a look at uh, what's coming uh, down the road too so uh, let me know what you think all right guys that's it for this episode god bless stay safe out there i'll see you on the next one